Artillery still remains the main weapon of war in Ukraine. For its effective use, as well as to counter enemy artillery, a Special Artillery Reconnaissance Brigade was created in Ukraine. The commander of the 15th Artillery Reconnaissance Brigade, Black Forest, of Ukraine, Colonel Alexander Popov, told UP why such a special unit was needed. According to him, the understanding that the Ukrainian armed forces needed a separate artillery reconnaissance brigade arose around 2017, but then it was limited to just talk. Analyzing what happened during the active phase of the fighting in 2014 to 2015, we realized that we had very few resources that could saturate the missile forces and artillery units with information. At that time, there was still enough ammunition, but where to shoot? Not a single cannon or howitzer will fire until you tell it exactly where to shoot, Popov says. He noted that individual units had elements of artillery reconnaissance, but they worked specifically for their brigade, not for everyone. There was also a problem with the shortage of people who could analyze the information collected by the intelligence service. There were no analytical units in the military command and control bodies. They had to be created. Now in the missile forces and artillery, they are called artillery reconnaissance control points. They receive intelligence information, convert it into a convenient form. It needs to be sorted what is relevant, what is needed stroke not needed in accordance with the task, conditions and so on. And the people who do this work are on the staff of our 15th Artillery Reconnaissance Brigade, Popov explains. Although the idea for such a brigade dates back to 2017, it was not actually formed until 2022 during the first weeks of Russia's full-scale invasion. Now the brigade helps target everything from missile systems to frontline mortar crews. According to Popov, the problem with artillery reconnaissance before 2022 was that the old means did not allow detecting enemy guns until they started firing. Now we can detect it even at the advanced stage. And this is really very cool. It's a fantastic story. And this is a very important change. Previously, artillery reconnaissance was aimed at identifying enemy artillery weapons. Large-scale warfare has shown that this is not enough. Now we are not limited to just enemy guns or artillery reconnaissance weapons. We are able to identify the full range of elements of the enemy's combat order on the battlefield, starting with electronic warfare, elements of the air defense system, command posts, fire destruction systems, which include artillery, enemy manpower. In short, everything that is not on the battlefield, the brigade commander says. According to the officer, artillery reconnaissance uses not only drones, but also other technical means. The drones detect only a part and more often perform the task of additional reconnaissance, refining the coordinates obtained by other technical means that our unit has. That is, the drone flies to confirm the target. The military man explained, well, in Popov's opinion, today even the armies of NATO countries can learn a thing or two from the Ukrainian armed forces. The operational staff of Russia's Belgorod Oblast has taken the decision to move the residents of several villages out of the area. Belgorod Oblast Governor Vyacheslav Gladkov has reported that many people have been injured and some killed in the border areas. A decision has been made to resettle the residents of the villages of Poraz and Dranovka in the Graveronsky district, and the village of Steri Kudr and the settlement of Pavlovka in the Valuyevsky district. The entrance to the village of Vyazovoy in the Krasnoyarusky district has been closed. Checkpoints are being set up, and it will only be possible to enter this settlement with permission from the administration. Unfortunately, the situation remains tense, many people have been injured and some killed. We must take measures to protect the population. The official statements issued by the Russian authorities make no mention of combat action. Gladkov said schools located in a 20-kilometer zone in the border municipalities of Belgorod Oblast would operate remotely. Earlier, he claimed that the situation at the border with Ukraine remains challenging but under control, and that Russian troops were conducting scheduled operations. 35 settlements are said to be closed to entry due to the operational situation. Recent events in Russia's Belgorod region have drawn a lot of attention due to the escalating military activity and rising tensions from the ongoing conflict with Ukraine. This area, 
situated close to the Russia-Ukraine border, has become a hotspot for intense military actions with serious consequences for both military personnel and civilians. Military incidents in the Belgorod region have surged, especially after Ukrainian forces ramped up their operations in the area. This uptick followed a significant push by Ukrainian troops into the nearby Kursk region, marking one of the largest cross-border operations since the conflict began. Ukrainian forces reportedly advanced into Russian territory, capturing several settlements along the way. The Belgorod region has been frequently targeted, facing drone strikes and missile attacks that have resulted in numerous civilian casualties. These assaults prompted the regional governor, Vyacheslav Gladkov, to declare a state of emergency, as the humanitarian situation in the area continues to worsen due to the attacks on civilian infrastructure. Recent reports also mention attempts by Ukrainian forces to breach the border at the Nekotayevka checkpoint. However, these efforts were reportedly repelled by Russian forces. Such incidents highlight the growing tensions and the complex challenge of managing the situation along the border. The ongoing conflict has had a profound impact on the daily lives of people in Belgorod and other affected areas. The city is now accustomed to frequent air raid sirens, and attacks on civilian targets are a common occurrence.